the triple body of the Buddha. The dogma of the triple body, or trikaya, as now accepted by all Mahayana schools of Buddhism in China and Japan, is a late development in the history of Mahayana. The dogma, before it was fully formulated, was only adumbrated here and there in the earlier Mahayana sutras. It was, probably, not until the Yogacara philosophy began to be crystallized into a system by a Sangha and his predecessors that the conception of the triple body came to form a part of their program. According to the Yogacara philosophy, the triple body is Dharmakaya, Sambhogakaya, and Nirmanakaya. Dharma here may be understood in either way as reality or as law-giving principle or simply as law. Kaya means body, or system. The combination, dharma-kaya, is then literally a body or person that exists as principle. It has now come to mean the highest reality from which all things derive their being and lawfulness, but which in itself transcends all limiting conditions. But dharma-kaya is not a mere philosophical word, as is indicated by the term kaya, which suggests the idea of personality, especially as it relates to Buddhahood. It belongs to the Buddha. It is what inwardly and essentially constitutes Buddhahood. For without it, a Buddha loses altogether his being. The Dharmakaya is also known as Svapafakaya, meaning self-nature body, for it abides in itself. It remains as such, retaining its self-nature. It is, in this sense, the absolute aspect of the Buddha in whom perfect tranquility prevails. The second body is the Sambhogakaya, which is ordinarily translated as body of recompense or enjoyment. Literally, enjoyment is a better word for Sambhogakaya, for it comes originally from the root to eat, to enjoy, to which the prefix sam, meaning together, is added. When we have recompense or reward body for it, the Chinese seem to point to another Sanskrit original, or else it is not quite a literal rendering, but given according to its derivative sense. For this body of enjoyment is attained as the result of, or as the reward for, a series of spiritual disciplines carried on through so many kalpas. The body thus realized is the Sambhogakaya, body of recompense, which is enjoyed by the well-deserving one, that is, Bodhisattva Mahasattva. The Buddha, as the body of enjoyment, is generally represented as a figure enveloped in all the glory of Buddhahood. For in him, incarnated, there is everything good and beautiful and holy, accruing from the perfection of the spiritual life. The particular features of each such Buddha may vary according to his original vows. For instance, his environment, his name, his form, his country, and his activity may not be the same. Amitabha Buddha has his pure land in the West, with all the accommodations as he desired in the beginning of his career as a bodhisattva. And so too with Akshobhaya, as described in the sutra bearing his name. The third body is the Nirmanakaya, usually translated as Hu Shen, which means body of transformation or simply assumed body. The Dharmakaya is too exalted a body for ordinary mortals to come into any conscious contact with. As it transcends all forms of limitation, it cannot become an object of sense or intellect. We ordinary mortals can perceive and have communion with his absolute body only through its transformed forms, and we perceive them only according to our capacities, moral and spiritual. They do not appear to us in the same form. We thus read in the Siddharma Pundarika or the Lotus Sutra that the Bodhisattva of Alokiteshvara transforms himself into so many different forms according to the kind of beings whose salvation he has in view at the moment. The Kshitigarbha Sutra or Jizo Sutra also mentions that the Bodhisattva Kshitigarbha takes upon himself a variety of forms in order to respond to the requirements of his worshippers. The conception of the Nirmanakaya is significant, 
seeing that this world of relativity stands contrasted with the absolute value of suchness, which can be reached only by means of the knowledge of suchness. The essence of Buddhahood is the Dharmakaya, but as long as the Buddha remains such, there is no hope for the salvation of a world of particulars. The Buddha has to abandon his original abode and must take upon himself such forms as are conceivable and acceptable to the inhabitants of this earth. He emanates, as it were, from absolute Buddhahood and is seen by those who are prepared by their previous karma to see him. Nirmana comes from the root ma, or to measure, to form, to display, to which meaning out of is prefixed. And the whole term, Nirmanakaya, is generally rendered as body of transformation in most sutras and sastras. Sometimes, however, Ying Shen, or response body, is used for this third member of the Trinity, causing confusion with the second member, which is occasionally also designated as Ying Shen. It is suspected that Ying Shen, as the third body, is not Nirmanakaya in Sanskrit. Perhaps it is Samvritti, as can be gathered from Tibetan sources. Samvritti is contrasted with Paramartha, when truth is regarded as having a double aspect, one as absolute truth and the other as relative, in concession to or in response to the worldly way of thinking. The Samvrittikaya, therefore, may mean the body of the Buddha which he assumes in response to the requirements of his followers. In this, the Buddha appears transformed and not in his original aspect as he is in himself, 